This time we're going to take a look at phishing resistant credentials in Microsoft Entra ID. What are they? How do they work? And most importantly, what can they do for you? Stay tuned and you'll learn something. Hello everyone, how are you? Nice to see you. Andy here. Thanks very much for joining me, especially hey, if this is your first time. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about something really important, uh, which is security. And security, of course, we're talking about identity, authentication and authorization. So identity, the means of identifying a user in a database. So a user ID, an account number, something like that. But the most important part is the authentication method. So authentication proving who you are. Now, for years, we've just been using usernames and passwords. And of course, the problem with that is a username and password is something that you know. It's not something that you are. So it doesn't really prove who you are. So what we have now is Microsoft are developing, as with other vendors, something called, obviously, MFA, multi-factor authentication. We've had this for quite some time, and it's very popular. And uh, according to figures, it reduces um, cybercrime by up to 99%, which is awesome. So kind of traditional phishing attacks are cut down by 99%. Now, what about the other 1% then? Well, um, when you look at those MFA features, you've got things like I can authenticate through a mobile device, through a facial recognition, fingerprint, even voice print in many cases. Um, but we've also got other technologies there as well, like, for example, a text message or a, an SMS message, rather, or a, a voice call. Now, evidence has shown in the cybersecurity community that these methods are potentially weak and could be intercepted by a man-in-the-middle attack. So what phishing-resistant uh, technologies do is basically it binds, it binds a public-private key pair of which the private key is stored either on a YubiKey or FIDO key or on your mobile device as a passkey. And this combined with something that you are, i.e. Windows Hello, Face, Fingerprint, Palm Vein, or whatever, is, is beyond doubt that this is who you are. And this has been proven up to be 99.9% .9 .9 effective against social engineering and phishing attacks. So phishing resistant technologies are definitely the way to go. So in this episode, we're going to take I'm going to take you through first of all what they are and I'm going to show you how you can configure them, how you can set them up, and also we'll talk about some of the benefits as well. Now, if you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to bump that subscribe button come on board and join our great learning community. And if you enjoy the session, well, please bump the like button. It does make a difference uh, to the channel. All right. If you want more, then I also have my own um, Patreon site there, just down there, and you'll get access to full courses, monthly Zoom calls, and a lot more. So go ahead and come and join us. So I think without any further ado, let's jump in and have a look at phishing-resistant credentials. And if you enjoy the session and if you've got questions, get your questions down below and I'll address them for you. Okay. In the meantime, you enjoy. So I'm kicking off here in Entra ID and I'm going to come down to identity. So first of all, the traditional method, of course, I can go into users. I can come in here and I can select a particular user. And one of the things that we can do, of course, is reset the user's password. Now, I have to be honest, remember that passwords are based on something that you know, not something that you are. So we need to think about how are we going to authenticate our particular user here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here in the portal. I'm going to come into the protection pane. In fact, if I go into authentication methods just here, you can see that we have a number of different authentication methods. 
Now we have FIDO keys. So this you might know this is a, as a UB key or a pass key. Um, these are physical keys. We obviously have the Microsoft Authenticator app. Um, and you can issue, for example, a temporary access pass. And this is really quite useful for, let's say, new starts within the company. You might also have hardware-based OAuth tokens. What's an OAuth token? It's the number combination that's in your Microsoft Authenticator. You do get hardware-based versions of these. But also things like voice calls and SMS. And as I mentioned, the problems with these methods is there is a potential for them to be intercepted. Um, you also have things like one-time passcodes and certificate-based authentication, which is great as long as the certificate is coming from a trusted certificate uh, repository or certificate authority. But these two, SMS and voice call, do you really want to use these? So what about phishing-resistant credentials? Well, this is where kind of FIDO keys come in and also with the Microsoft Authenticator app. This is based on something that you have and something that you are. So essentially with FIDO, it uses a public private key pair and the private key is generated and is stored on the device and the public key is sent to a relaying server. So when the user authenticates, they require a biometric authentication. And once that's been confirmed that the user is genuine, it then compares the public key from the relaying server to the public key that you have, and it's then used to authenticate you. So to enable this, of course, I can just switch this on and I can uh, enable this for all users or do it for a specific group of users if you want to. Um, in the configuration tab here, you can see that you can allow self-service setup, so allow my users to do it. Um, enforce it, so do you want to enforce the users that they must use this? You can also do what we call a key restriction policy as well. And with a key restriction policy, you can basically say, hey, I want to go and enforce these key restrictions. So the next thing that you'll notice is something called an AA GUID. And this means an authenticator at a station globally unique identifier. Essentially, this is a unique 128-bit uh, identifier which indicates the model of the authenticator that you're using. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is it talks about enforcing key restrictions. And I can say yes, and you can either allow or you can block specific keys. So what are these specific keys that I'm talking about? Well, here you can see that I've compiled a list of the most common kind of vendors. Yes. So, for example, if I, well, let's say, had Windows Hello or Chrome on a Mac or something like that, Google Password Manager, and I wanted to uh, have that, I could basically just copy this AA GUID, then go back into my portal here, and I would then say Allow, and I can then add in this AA GUID, like so. And that now means that my users could now uh, use this uh, as part of their security. And again, you could use this in combination with the likes of Windows Hello to give them uh, access to that system. Uh, a common question is, okay, so what is what do we mean by phishing resistant? To enforce this and to improve your security, if you go over to authentication strengths, You'll notice that I've got a, a few here, multi-factor authentication, passwordless, and MFA. And there's also one here called phishing resistant. Now, you can actually, again, create these yourself. So, for example, I'll call this my uh, corp uh, policy. Let's just give it called corp policy one. And you can see here that we have a number of different authentication methods that you might want to support within your organization. So I'm going to say, yeah, I want phishing resistant. And this includes Windows Hello for Business, 
pass keys or FIDO keys, as well as certificate-based authentication methods. Now, um, just to mention what we mean by phishing resistant, it means it can't be intercepted. So, you know, there's no passwords. So users can just simply uh, log in with no usernames and no passwords. Um, so uh, how can I, as a user, how can I register for one of these FIDO keys, for example? So you can see, first of all, I've gone ahead and I've created my phishing resistant policy here and I'm just going to click on that and I'm basically saying hey that's the only type of policy that I want to create so how do I enforce this I want to target all users as I said or a particular user so you can also further enforce this in the likes of conditional access so if I go into policies here here's one that I made earlier and I've got a policy here called the Oslo admin policy now, if I come in here and if I just click on to obviously my conditions, I've uh, sorted that out. But the one I'm looking at is if I come into the grant node here, you can see that I've mentioned that I want to grant access, but I require multi-factor authentication. So what I want to do is I'm going to remove that checkbox and I'm going to click on require an authentication strength. And if I click onto the drop down arrow, you can see that I now have, here it is, that Corp Policy 1 that I just created, which is phishing resistant. So the next thing, um, phishing resistant credentials. And what does that exactly mean? Well, if I go back into my, um, just go back into my portal here, and back into authentication methods, I've mentioned this briefly before, but the FIDO keys are essentially hardware-based keys. But Microsoft are very shortly about to rename these as pass keys. And as you've already seen, pass keys are going to be accessible on a whole bunch of different platforms. So to demo pass keys, I've come to this website, passkeys.io, and I want to sign up. So I'm going to sign up as Megan. And I'm going to say, yep, yeah, I've not got an account at the moment. So I'm just going to do this. And it says, hey, do you want to go ahead and create your first passkey? So you can either create a passkey for your um, browser, your Edge browser, or you can use your phone, tablet, or security key. Now, in this case, I'm using an Apple device. So it, it will assign that passkey to my keychain, which means I can essentially use it with any of my devices. So what it will do is it will then prompt me to uh, take a screenshot. So what it now does is it will now prompt me to use the QR code here. Now, again, this is just a demo, but I'm sure you'll get the idea. So again, it, using my device and my facial recognition, I'm going to say, yes, I want to create a passkey for Megan on my mobile device. And you can now see that the passkey has now been created. So at this point, I might say, hey, do you want to go ahead and create another passkey? So again, um, because of my device, there's no point in me creating two, um, but I could also create one for my Edge browser here. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sign out. And let's have a look at what the experience of signing in is like. So at this point, it's asking me, hey, do you want to sign in? And I'm not even going to sign in with a, a email address. What I want to do here, though, is I want to sign in with a passkey. So I'm going to use the QR code and it now connects to my Apple keychain. And it's now saying, yep, yeah, using facial recognition. And of course, it's now going to authenticate me. And I'm now signed in. How cool is that? So there you have it. Phishing resistant credentials. Very important component in Microsoft Entra ID and Microsoft 365. And as I mentioned, Microsoft are currently rolling out passkeys in the foreseeable future. So definitely look out for that. Super, super cool and a very, very good security tool. Now, if you've got questions about this or any of my sessions, again, get your questions uh, down below. And remember, please bump the like button if you enjoyed it. 
And if you've not subscribed, you know what I'm going to say. Click on that subscribe button, ring that bell, and come and join my learning community. That's it for today. Thanks so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.